Hello, and welcome to the TI Precision Lab series on basics of analog multiplexers. This video will provide an overview of the DC performance parameters of multiplexers. The goal of this series is to understand the DC performance parameters of multiplexers and how they affect data acquisition system performance. This video series explains how the parameters listed in an analog multiplexers datasheet can be used to understand system performance limitations and error sources. In this video, we will first have a short discussion on the basic construction of a CMOS switch. Next, we will discuss on resistance and on capacitance. Specifically, we will see how on resistance can cause gain error and nonlinearity, as well as how on capacitance can affect settling behavior of multiplexers. The main goal of this presentation is to highlight the DC parameters of multiplexers and to understand how they impact performance of a data acquisition system. Before moving to multiplexer basics, let's first understand the basic construction of a CMOS switch and its characteristics. The slide here shows the typical construction of a CMOS switch. A CMOS switch is formed by connecting an N-channel MOSFET and a P-channel MOSFET in parallel, as shown here. This particular arrangement allows us to switch both positive and negative voltages at the output with equal ease. A logic high signal at the gate of the NMOS will enable this MOSFET and allow negative voltages to pass to the output, while a logic low at the gate of the PMOS will enable this MOSFET and allow positive voltages to pass to the output. The inverter is used to turn on both transistors when a logic high input is applied to the control signal, or turn off both transistors with a logic low input. Several CMOS switches can be combined with some simple logic control to create a multiplexer. Although the CMOS switch input pin and output pin are interchangeable, for simplicity we will assume the source pin is the input and the drain pin is the output of the CMOS switch. PMOS and NMOS switches have a voltage-dependent resistance which varies with the input signal. This is shown in the on-resistance versus input voltage curve here. PMOS switches offer lower on-resistance for positive input voltages, while NMOS switches offer lower on-resistance for negative input voltages. The parallel combination of these two devices has a combined on-resistance, which has a much lower variation with input voltage swing, and allows us to pass both of the signal polarities with equal ease. Now let's discuss the first important parameter of multiplexers. Switch on resistance is the resistance between the source pin and drain pin when the switch is closed. As discussed earlier, switch on resistance varies with input voltage. The difference between the maximum and minimum value of an on resistance over a specific input voltage range is termed as R on flatness. The R on flatness specification, as well as the on resistance versus drain to source voltage curve, is given in the datasheet. The typical R on curve for the MUX 36 SO8 device is shown here. Greater R on values will introduce larger gain errors. Also, larger R on values create an offset voltage error when leakage current flows through the MUX. Finally, depending on the circuit configuration, R-on modulation with input voltage can introduce variations in gain error, which produce signal-dependent distortion. We will cover the distortion in detail later and show how some circuit configurations can virtually eliminate this problem. This slide illustrates how the on resistance of a multiplexer can introduce a gain and nonlinearity error if it is placed in series with an amplifier gain setting resistor R1. Note that the on resistance directly adds to R1, creating an effective gain, or AG, that is given by the equation AG equals negative RF divided by the sum of R on and R1. Notice that the value of R on is dependent upon the input signal. In this case, the input signal varies from negative 12 volts to positive 12 volts, and R on varies from about 120 ohms to 150 ohms due to the R on flatness limitations of the switch. Since the on resistance is changing with input signal, the gain will also change according to the input signal. This variation in gain versus input signal creates a nonlinearity in the transfer function. In this example, the worst case nonlinearity is about 1%. Note that the nonlinearity errors are calculated by doing an endpoint fit to the transfer function and comparing the measured transfer function to the endpoint fit. This example intentionally uses small gain setting resistors to make the nonlinearity and gain error more prominent. However, in a circuit where current flows through the multiplexer, the on resistance will introduce gain and nonlinearity errors. In the next slide, 
We will see how the gain and nonlinearity errors can be avoided using a buffer amplifier. This circuit illustrates a way to avoid distortion and gain error associated with the previous circuit. Note that the input impedance for any op amp is very high compared with the on resistance of the multiplexer. For example, the common mode impedance of the OPA209 is 1 gigaohm. This high input impedance will eliminate any gain error and gain error nonlinearity introduced due to the MUX R on and R on flatness. In this case, the main error related to the on resistance is caused by MUX leakage current and amplifier bias current flowing through R on. For this example, the MUX leakage current is typically 1 picoamp and the amplifier bias current is typically 1 nanoamp. A 150 ohm on resistance would develop a very small error of about 150 nanovolts, which is negligible in most cases. In general, the on resistance will not be an issue when the current flowing through the MUX is minimal. For example, when the MUX is connected to a high impedance input. This slide explains how MUX on capacitance determines the settling and transient performance of the system. The figure illustrates a simplified model for a MUX. Each channel of the MUX can be modeled as a series combination of capacitors and resistors. CS and CD represent the switch source and drain capacitance respectively when the switch is off. R on is again the on resistance of the MUX. Typically, MUX drain capacitance is higher than source capacitance. When the switch is on, we can approximate that the MUX on capacitance C on is equal to CS on plus CD on. Most MUX datasheets provide typical and maximum values for this capacitance, as well as this capacitance versus source voltage. The drain capacitance CD is switched from one channel to the next when the MUX changes channels, and this capacitance needs to be recharged to the input voltage for the new channel. This transition determines the multiplexer's settling, which will be covered in detail in the next slide. This slide explains the MUX transient behavior and the effect of on capacitance on the MUX output voltage settling. Let us consider an example where the MUX is switching from channel 1 to channel 2. The input voltage source for channel 1 and channel 2 is called V1 and V2, and the source output impedance of channel 1 and channel 2 is called RS1 and RS2. The charge on capacitance CD when channel 1 is on is QD1 is equal to V1 times CD. The charge on capacitance CD when channel 2 is on is QD2 is equal to V2 times CD. When switching from channel 1 to channel 2, V1 will have to provide the difference in charge, delta Q. The equation for delta Q is given by delta Q is equal to V1 minus V2 times CD. Since lower delta Q can help with faster settling, the value of delta Q should be minimized. This is done by choosing a very low on capacitance MUX. The MUX settling time to n-bit precision is given by T sub MUX settle is equal to K times the sum of R on and RS2 multiplied by the sum of CD and CS, where K is the number of time constants required to settle an n-bit accurate system. Since the on capacitance of the MUX C on is given by C on equals CD plus CX, the equation can be simplified. To understand multiplexer settling in typical applications, let's compare two different types of multiplexers where the on capacitance is the only differentiating factor. One of the MUXs has an on capacitance of 10 picofarads, and the other one has an on capacitance of 30 picofarads. Each multiplexer is fed with a high impedance input source as shown in the figure. Input source VN1 has a typical voltage output of 5 volts, and input VN2 has a typical voltage output of 1 volt. For simplicity, assume each source has a series impedance of 100 kilo ohms. The multiplexer channels are switched at a time interval of 10 microseconds. The series impedance of the source, or 100 kilo ohms, forms an RC filter with the MUX on capacitance with a time constant equal to R times C. When MUX channels are switched at 10 microsecond intervals, the MUX with an on capacitance of 30 picofarads cannot settle to the input source's final value due to its high time constant. On the other hand, the MUX with an on capacitance of 10 picofarads can settle to the final value. Hence, for minimizing the MUX settling time, we need to choose a very low on capacitance and low R on multiplexer. Typically, multiplexers with low on resistance have higher on capacitance and vice versa. Lower R on minimizes gain related errors while lower on capacitance helps with fast settling performance. Also, 
higher oncapacitance can introduce distortion in systems where input channels are switched at a very fast rate. So based on the specific application, one needs to make a trade-off between these parameters. In summary, we discussed how on-resistance and on-capacitance parameters of multiplexers are defined and how they affect system performance. Stay tuned for the next video, which discusses details on two other multiplexer parameters, charge injection and leakage current. Thank you for your time! Please try the quiz to check your understanding of this video's content.